Hello there, I'm GB Vegas, and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 19. In this tutorial we're going to carry on where we left off from last time so we're going to do a little bit more with our cat warrior script but the main focus of this tutorial is our skeleton enemy so we're going to investigate him and what he can do uh, in a bit more detail. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this massive series and everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, let's head to our Cat Warrior. And if you remember, the whole idea of it is he tells us to pick up our axe before we can go any further. We do that, come back to him, and he lets us go a little bit further on to where the skeleton is going to be. In order for us to do that, we need to go to the conversation object and head to the NPC chat script. So let's double click it and open it up in Visual Studio. So what are we going to do here? Well, we have those blocker objects that we have. So we have the one that actually blocks the way. And we also have the one which uh, flashes up a message on the screen saying you cannot go that way. We obviously need to remove those to continue going through the game. So after we've spoken here and he says, I see you have your ax, we need to remove them from there. So let's declare them as variables at the top. Public game object. And the first one will be main blocker semicolon. The next one public game object and this will be a uh, block text semicolon and all we have to do here is just deactivate those two objects by using set active false so before we start the coroutine we just need to have main blocker dot set active false and same again with i forgot the name of the uh Ah, block text, that was it. I literally typed that and I forgot it. So block text dot set active false semicolon and save. So you'll probably notice as you go through game development, your scripts get longer and longer and longer. Don't worry about that at all. It may get to a point where you feel you have to annotate, i.e. put the little double slash and just say... This is when the mouse moves away or, you know, a, uh, an annotation here just saying we got the axe and save. So if it's green, then you know that that's OK. It's not executed within the script itself. Uh, it can be quite useful in larger scripts. So if you feel you would need to do that, please do. Don't let me stop you from doing that. So if we head back to Unity now. Uh, this should allow us to actually walk through here. Uh, I know for a fact that we can't go through there right now, um, simply because they are both there, so we cannot go through. Uh, so let's quickly test this out and make sure it works before we carry on with our enemy. So let's take our axe. Let's head to the cat warrior. And obviously we'll speak to this... Uh, chat yep perfect okay so now we should be able to head outside this village oh we cannot go that way so no oh, that's why i made a schoolboy error there guys you'll be surprised how often uh, people do this so area block is the main blocker block note is there so that's why the text box still appeared and we couldn't actually go anywhere. Uh, so yeah, let's pick up that axe again. And while we run through this, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to do with our enemy. So as you know, I'm using the skeleton enemy that I got from the asset store. And obviously you don't have to use that. Uh, it's up to you if you want to use the same one. I, um, I, I know that no matter what we do, the same principle will apply. So we're going to test out. Oh, there we go. See, we can get through now. There we go. So we're out into the big bad world here. So no matter what we do, we can use the same principles on pretty much any enemy that we would use, as long as they have the correct animations there, i.e. walking, idle, attacking, all that kind of thing. 
So let's take a look at bringing in this skeleton enemy to our game. So let's go to where he is in character under the fancy monster skeleton. I'm going to head out here. And what I think I might do actually is quickly paint the terrain. I think it's too bright. I'm not, I'm not very happy with how that looks. So let's do that on there. So our skeleton enemy is going to be around here. I'll probably add grass in under these trees at some point soon. Again, it's up to you if you want to do that. Uh, so bring our skeleton here. He is fairly small, so let's increase his size. Let's see what it's like at 50, 50, 50. He looks pretty big. Bigger than I would like, I think. Um, what I'll also do is I'm going to turn off the area blockers so we can kind of get through. And I'm going to move our FPS controller closer to him just so we're not wasting time in the tutorial going through everything. So let's bring our controller over to here. And let's see what the, ca the character, the skeleton looks like here. So... You can see he's in the default T pose. Great. Let's play around with him. Uh, in fact, to kind of block out that light, I'm just going to quickly add some uh, maybe mountainy kind of things in the background. Oops, too much. Too much. Uh, brush size a bit smaller. I feel like I'm wasting time here, guys. I apologize. Okay, so that should kind of block out the light just a little bit. Uh, it's it's mainly because of what we have done with our post-processing. Obviously, feel free to work with your post-processing a little bit if you want to. So let's also decrease the size of this uh, skeleton warrior. Let's put him to 25, 25, 25. That's probably too small now, but we'll see. And, okay, let's investigate. As long as we get the size right... That should do okay so we leave him at 25 by 25 by 25 now he has an animator attached to him this animator serves much in the same way as it does with the door that we also have over here it contains any animation that we're able to use uh, concerning the skeleton and his animations are right here in the any folder you see each of the individual ones here we have attack damage death idle knockback run skill stand walk so let's go with the idle one so if we go to this object here which has idle press the arrow you'll see this animation file called idle let's hold control press d to extract it and it will make it an individual <coughs> excuse me an individual animation uh, let's tick loop time up here and obviously all that does is just repeats the animation over and over. Uh, I'm going to right click and rename our skeleton. So rename skeleton enemy. Uh, we will more than likely change uh, the object of this as well at a later date um, as we build up the AI for this because strictly what we're going to do is start with very simple kind of basic but cool AI and we build up from there. So drag that idle animation onto our skeleton enemy. And if we go to animator, we can see right there, the idle is that default animation. Remember we've dealt with this before, this animator component here. We can have different animations and they can link and you can run different animations. And that's what we're gonna have a go at. So hopefully we can see him now. There's his idle animation. So we're just kind of looking around, checking things out. And obviously we can do that with various other uh, animations. So let's take his attack animation, for example. Let's hold control, press D on this attack animation. And then also drag and drop that animation onto the skeleton enemy up here. And if we go to our animator component, you'll see that although it's there, the idle animation is still the default animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for now, right click on the attack and set as default right there. And yeah, you've guessed it. He's just going to attack continuously as long as we have loop time ticked there. 
So let's head back to our scene view, press play, and we should be able to see him attack. And attack. There's the attack, continuously. So realistically, we don't want the loop time ticked on the attack because we want to be able to trigger the attack at certain points. That's the whole idea. It's not a continuous loop. So let's head back to the animator again and set idle as the default again. So it's just idling around. So what we'll do now is we'll create a script which will allow us some very simple AI that means when we are within his range, he will attack. When we come out of his range, he won't attack. So what we need to do is attach to our enemy here, or rather around him. Um, let's go right click. 3D object, I'm just trying to think what we should use. Let's use a, uh, let's use a cylinder, shall we? So we'll use a cylinder and we will decrease that by quite a lot. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, see it fits around him. Uh, I'm gonna decrease the Y to 0 0.05, no, it's too much, 0 0.01. And I'm going to drag it up. So, round about there. And what we'll do next is increase the size. So we'll have that as 0 0.3 and 0.3. And I'm going to disable, or rather, remove the capsule collider because I don't want a capsule collider. Right click, remove component. The reason is because you saw those green lines arcing around this object, this kind of donut thing that we have. I don't want that. I want to add in a mesh collider because I want the collider to perfectly surround this object. So let's type in mesh and it's the first one right there. And let's have convex and is trigger. And let's also remove mesh renderer. So as this basically disappears, but it can still act as a trigger. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's right click, create and C sharp script. In fact, no, do you know what? We'll create a folder because we'll have a folder specifically for enemies. So enemies. And in here, let's right click, create C sharp script. We'll call this skeleton AI. Now this is something we are going to build up over quite a while. It's not gonna be something we can instantly put together because AI is something I like to build upon. I like to get started with it and build from there. So the idea of what I want to happen quite simply here is when we approach our skeleton and cross into the section that surrounds him, he will attack. And when we come out, he just stands still again. So what we need to do is get rid of void start, void update, any annotations. And we'll need to declare the skeleton himself as a variable. So public game object the skeleton semicolon and we'll have void on trigger enter doesn't need to be private so you can delete that uh, what we'll do is we will get our skeleton to attack so the skeleton dot get component and in brackets animator open close bracket dot play not plat play and in brackets and quotes the name of that animation which is attack with a capital A and semicolon. So it might be worth just for now once again setting the uh, animation on attack back to loop just so we can see that happening constantly. And obviously we then have to do the inverse of that. So we need to change what this is and just play idle when we exit. So that's void on trigger exit. Doesn't need to be private, just like before. And it's going to be the skeleton dot get component animator open close bracket dot play brackets and quotes idle and semicolon and save. So by default, he will play that idle animation because we have told it to 
be the default uh, animation right here. However, when we get close to him, it will switch. And then when we leave, it will switch back. So we need to attach that script that we've just created, the very simple AI, onto the cylinder. And then attach the skeleton as the enemy onto there. And let's press play and check this out. So we can see there's his idle animation playing. However, we get close and he attacks. There we go. So you can see that the animation itself does kind of cut off. Now, I must point out here that in certain situations, uh, the animations for something like this, something for free that you have, will kind of do that because it's not... Well, basically, you have to pay quite a lot of money to get a really, really good um, model that has the correct animations, which can loop around and revert... Well, not reverse, but uh, sort themselves out. However, you can actually do it with these, given a bit of time and precision. So, what I would recommend is just work with these animations, see what things you can do. Um, because there is a lot you can actually do. So, what I would like to do next tutorial is I'm going to probably modify this AI script a little bit more, but we're going to work with tags and we're also going to use NavMesh. I'll explain a little bit more what NavMesh is next time, but the basics of it is we give this guy an area that he can walk around in on his own. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.